So as the Aam Aadmi Party celebrates, it's needless to say, they have many tall promises to keep. Will Kedriwal 2.0 deliver? That is our big question tonight. Joining us to discuss the road ahead for the National Capital and the Aam Aadmi Party is Meera Sanyal, former banker with RBS and now member of the Aam Aadmi Party. Sanju Varma, the CEO of Violet Arc Managers and a member of the BJP. A.K. Bhattacharya of the Business Standard and R. Jagannathan, the editor-in-chief of FirstPost.com. Appreciate all of you joining us here uh, on the show. Amira Sanyal, congratulations to you, but I'll come to you in just a bit. I want to go across to our Jagannathan first uh, because I want to congratulate you, Jaggi, on getting the call right. You said it on the 28th or 29th of January that the AAP was headed for a victory in Delhi. What gave you the confidence to believe in the resurrection of the Aam Aadmi Party, which was written off post the Lok Sabha polls, especially since this was an election that the BJP fought on the Modi factor? The basic point was like uh, AAP was holding steady and rising steadily all through the weeks from Delhi onwards right up to the end of January when BJP made a sudden change. Then there was the, um, uh, uh, I think the error probably Kiran Vedi coming in at the last minute and then the poll suddenly started showing a huge diversion, uh, divergence between the BJP vote and the Aam Aadmi vote. At that level of divergence you can only get a landslide. But even that divergence did not really measure the full difference of, and the scale of the landslide as we know now. I mean, you've got about 54% of the vote and 95% of the seats. So the landslide was really a complete uh, tsunami. Yeah. Well, it is a landslide, Jackie, but before I get to the other panelists now, uh, what does the Delhi verdict mean for economic policies of the Bharatiya Janata Party? The worry is that this may force the BJP to be more populist than it would like to be. It may force the BJP to review its positions on cutting back, for instance, on subsidies. Uh, is this a legitimate concern, a legitimate fear? I, I think it is a legitimate concern f uh, for people from the outside, but my guess is that uh, this battle will have to be won inside the BJP and the Sangh. That is, if uh, the, uh, the Modi gets reads the right message from this, it means that he has to fast forward his reforms. Because as you go forward, there will be more such electoral ch challenges and there could be some more reverses later on. So if he doesn't get a carry through his agenda now, he will never be able to carry it through. And populism, you know where it got UPA. So he, I think, understands that message. So I think he made a mistake by not speeding it up in the first half of, uh, second half of last year. Now I think he himself probably will know it has to be done. The question is how they manage the opposition, the legislation stuck in the Rajya Sabha, all those kind of things. But I think he'll have to get the Sangh Parivar to pipe down and he'll have to decide that he'll have to push through the agenda in the next 3-4 months so that by the time we get to the Bihar elections, assuming they're not brought forward, he uh, gets the things done. So, but I said, as I said, this is a debate that they'll have to have within the party. My, I am optimistic that they will make the right calls this time. Okay, uh, let me get AKB on, it, on this. Uh, AKB, Jaggi believes that the Prime Minister is actually going to put his foot on the pedal and try and push the reform agenda forward because God knows what's going to happen as far as politics is concerned a couple of months down the road. Do you feel as confident as Jaggi that this is not going to force the BJP into some sort of an economic funk? This is not going to push the BJP to review its position on some of the tough reforms that it is hoping to take forward, for instance, significant subsidy rationalization? Well, I think on, on, on the question of subsidy rationalization, he should speed that up because uh, the, the, the faster he ensures the uh, uh, subsidy rationalization through his Pahel, which is Pratyaksh Hastantir Islab, which is a different name for direct benefit transfer scheme, if he can speed that up, I, I have a feeling that he will be achieving the kind of goals uh, that uh, the Aam Aadmi, the people who actually need the subsidies, will get them faster without leakage and without any diversion. So on rationalization of subsidies, I think I see him, he should step ahead and step up the pace of the reform on that front. On the question of, uh, of uh, moves such as uh, uh, diluting or reducing uh, the, imp uh, the, the provisions under the Food Security Act or the yeah. Narega Act, or even the land uh, legislation. My yeah. sense is that he will have deep introspection on all the three issues, mm. whether those three can become a big political hot potato 
for BJP in the elections going forward in the next one year or so. So I think you're, on the three issues, he will be a little hesitant. Uh, yeah. Hesitant, so but on the hesitation. subsidy rationalization, I have a feeling he'll go okay. ahead. Yeah. Okay, subsidy rationalization, he'll go ahead on crucial issues like the land ordinance, the Food Security Act, and of course what they intend to do as far as the NREGS is concerned, you believe that there may be some introspection, yeah. a little bit of a pullback. Sanju Verma, yes. uh, you know, and that is the concern as far as the market uh, goes. Uh, when the exit poll results were announced, we actually saw the markets tank by about 500 points in anticipation of an ARP victory, and look what the markets did today. ARP Resounding success, resounding victory, historic mandate, and the markets are up. What do we make of this? Uh, Shireen, uh, first of all, I think uh, the volatility that we've seen in the markets in the last 48 hours, uh, down by 500 points and then, you know, uh, staging uh, a comeback with a vengeance today. I think uh, the markets... Uh, you know, um, are not necessarily looking at the uh, Delhi uh, poll outcome uh, in the manner that you and me are. Uh, I think market mm. participants are far more savvier. And uh, uh, my personal sense is that the market volatility has a lot to do with the fact uh, that, uh, you know, uh, we've had a gravity-defying run. Uh, so, you know, uh, pre-budget, there will be a correction. Don't forget the, that the volatility index in the last one month alone has gone up from something like 15 uh, to about 22 yeah. or thereabouts, uh, signifying that, you know, there will be bouts of volatility. It's not going to be a linear one. So in Delhi now, Sanju, a non-event as, as far the as the market in the last one year. Is, is Delhi now a non-event as far as the market Yes, because uh, Shirin... Yes, uh, Shirin, uh, you know, uh, uh, while this uh, does not sound, uh, you know, cliched, uh, you know, the fact of the matter is that uh, Delhi accounts for less than or barely 2% of the country's population and less than 3% of the country's GDP. Mind you, Delhi sure. is not a Mumbai. Delhi is not Maharashtra, which accounts, you know, for more than 15% of the country's GDP and 25% okay. of the manufacturing output. So I think anybody uh, in their sane mind uh, would not... Uh, you know, think that this is a referendum either on uh, how fast forward the reforms process should be or whether Modi should okay. take a breather and pause for a while. You know, it's always clear that in a welfare state like India, there always has okay. to be a tight rope walking between the fact All right. that you need to give in a bit and you need to also pull oh, absolutely a bit so that absolutely. You know, you're not seen as too populist as, at the as, same as time the you're not seen as too reformist. Yeah, but, as but the finance I think minister it, continues to say politics is you know, the art I would just of, like of, to make of the possible. But I'll come back to you, Sanju, in just a second. Let me bring Meera Sanyal in on this conversation. Uh, first of all, Meera Sanyal, congratulations uh, on a stunning victory that your party has pulled off in Delhi. The question now is... Uh, what happens from here on? I'm quoting to you from your 42-page manifesto where you promise big change without big spending. It's a laundry list of uh, things that you've promised to Delhi, including full statehood, free 700 litres of uh, water, abolish mandatory 10% annual hike in water tariff, electricity bills will be halved, a new power plant for Delhi, free Wi-Fi throughout Delhi, subsidy and incentives for solar energy. You talk about efficient use of uh, money as well as raising revenues. Uh, talk us through what we can expect in terms of innovative revenue mobilization ideas. So I think a couple of things, uh, you know, Shireen, when we, when we formed this manifesto, it was based on the Delhi dialogue process, which Ashish Khaita and Adar Shastri and myself led. And what we did was, you know, at that time, people had pretty much written off up. And we said, all right, let's enter into a dialogue with our key stakeholders, whether or not they are voters. So we went into bastions of the Congress, of the BJP, and said, all right, this is not about votes. Yeah. Let's talk about the problems and what are the solutions. And we engaged with thousands of people, but also with experts in the various fields. The other thing we did is we examined the budget to whatever extent information was in the public domain. And the Delhi government's budget is about 40,000 crores. And the budget of the yeah. MCD and the NDMC is about 13,000 crores. That is a mm. massive amount of money. Now, to the extent that we were able to actually dig into some of this, we found big wastages, big leakages, and you know, some kind of a strange prioritization. So to give you an but example... But Sanyal, yeah, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but big enough leakages to be able to, uh, to fulfill the promises that you're making? Uh, 
500 new schools, 20 new colleges, 1,700 new teachers, recruit 4,000 doctors, 15,000 new paramedics, uh, bring down electricity tariffs by half. Uh, enough leakages to be able to fund all of that? So let me tell you about the schools. We talk about 500 new schools. There is an existing extant budget for about 200 schools which has not been utilized. I give you an example of the MCD North, which has a budget of 25 crores for cleanliness. This year we had the Swachh Bharat Abhyan. I challenge you to tell me, Shireen, how much of that money has been spent? Not mm. more than 3.8 lakhs. Now this is a national program of the BJP with the BJP controlling the MCD. So it is actually yeah. quite mysterious in terms of how they have prioritized and what they have spent on. The other thing mm. is leakages. Let me give you an example. Once again, the same MCD. You go onto their website. This is information from an RTI, not from the Aam Admi Party. The MCD sure. has spent 12 crores and taken nine years to develop the MCD website. And you know, one mm. of our young young IT people were saying, Mira, this should not cost more than 1.2 lakhs and take not more than six weeks to develop. So this yeah. is the kind of example of things that have been happening. And so when we say, okay. all right, you know, these are the things that we are going to do, we have looked at it and said, yes, over a five-year period, these things are required. Let me talk, for example, about incubation centers. The city of Bangalore is setting up two and a half million square feet of incubation space. Today, either in Mumbai or in Delhi, a young entrepreneur yeah. has nowhere to go. And you know, in, in other cities, you might be able to do this in your garage. Okay. In Delhi, resident welfare associations do not allow any commercial activity in residences. So where yeah. does a young entrepreneur go in what is probably the most entrepreneurial city in India? These are the kind of things that we have looked at and said, all right, how do we make it possible? Because, you know, to be very candid, what we have said is we don't believe that we can create, you know, millions of jobs, but we can empower thousands and thousands of small entrepreneurs. And okay. very much that's what we're focused on. Chakit, we were talking about the laundry list of promises that the AAP has made in its 42-page manifesto. Arvind Kejriwal this morning admitting himself that it's a scary mandate. But is that a, perhaps an understatement, uh, you know, given the promises made and given the expectations? Absolutely. If you get uh, almost all the seats that you have contested, 95% victory rate, then what it means is that the mandate is too humongous and scary because you have to now fulfill so many different kinds of expectations from people. Because he did not win from only one class. He won across classes from the business class to the banyas to the lower middle to middle income and the upper income. In fact, he won all 10 seats in the upper income areas. So, if so many guys have so much riding on you, it is unlikely that you can satisfy everybody. So, I think uh, anger will set in after uh, six months or a year. He needs to look for innovative, innovative solutions. But Kejriwal 1.0 was all about anti-bear business and all kinds of things. But AKP, let me put that question to you now as far as the execution challenge is concerned. And Team Modi is facing an execution challenge at this point in time. And the AAP is not known for its administrative skills. How concerned are you about the execution challenge and being able to deliver on the mandate? Well, you know, I, it, it does uh, scare me also. Uh, because I think uh, the promises he made, uh, the AAP party, are, are quite, uh, quite ambitious promises. Uh, the first challenge he will face uh, is on the question of jurisdiction. Uh, and as, and as, as, as you know, Delhi is a, is a very peculiar state. It has got no control over the corporations that it runs. Yeah. It has got no control over the land it owns. It has got no control over the police it has. So uh, anything that he wants to do, he is likely to come in confrontation with the central government. As a matter of fact, even Delhi's financial powers can often be curtailed or uh, the override ridden by the central diktat. So I think right. the first battle uh, and challenge would be a uh, jurisdictional issue. Number two, uh, he will have a problem in terms of, uh, you know, his resources will not be a problem. Delhi is a rich state. Mm. And if he can move ahead on 
GST and he can endorse his GST and since Delhi is yeah. a consumption state and in a destination based mm. tax system, Delhi will hugely benefit from there. So in my view, if he can really move ahead on GST and actually okay. implement his promise of reducing the VAT rate and making VAT mm -hmm. Delhi the, having the most competitive VAT rate, it will really uh, make Delhi's let, resource let position me. even better and the, okay. the, the business situation Let me put that to Meena Sanya. Let and me, thirdly... Let me put that to Meena Sanya, sure. sir. Uh, Meena Sanya, you made yeah. the VAT promise in your manifesto. You promised to not just uh, make it simpler, but you've also promised to bring the rates down. A.K. Bhattacharya saying that make Delhi the most competitive, even as far as the GST is concerned. The draft bill is now available for everybody to see. Do you support the government's endeavor as far as the GST is concerned? Take us through your specifics on that. So absolutely we do and I think Mr. Bhattacharya is completely right. You know, Delhi has no manufacturing uh, to speak of and it certainly doesn't have much uh, agriculture to speak of. It has always been a very, very big trading and retail hub and actually at the moment, you know, you're squeezing traders dry. We've had numerous discussions as part of the Delhi dialogue with small businessmen and with traders and they have been a very big part of our support base because in our yeah. 49 days, uh, you you know, uh, Shireen, it was absolutely clear. We stopped the the VAT raid Raj, as it was called. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. you know, the figures are very clear. In that period, in that first quarter, we gained more VAT by an amount of about a thousand crores as compared to the mm. previous year. So it's, you know, as Arvind says, aap janta ko gale se laga lo, aap vyapariyon ko gale se laga lo, and they return it in kind because Delhi is a very, very entrepreneurial place. I mean, people understand yeah, business yeah. like nowhere else. So this is something uh, that we have very consciously yeah. done. I'll come back to you and, and uh, Sanju Varma, just taking that point forward, this is a conscious strategic decision of the Ahmadi party to woo the business community. This is Kedriwal 2.0. Shireen, uh, you know, without wanting to sound like a bunch of uh, sour grapes, uh, you know, uh, while I concede that it's been a spectacular victory for AAP, uh, and congratulations to Meera as well on that, the point is that, uh, you know, uh, there is a famous saying that you only get the government that you deserve. And without wanting to sound offensive, the fact of the matter is I myself have gone through the AAP manifesto. Uh, I wouldn't be uncharitable to call it bogus. But if I just take two of their big promises, they're absolutely... Yeah impractical and non-deliverable. You know, first of all, the 50% cut in electricity tariffs that they've proposed. Mm. Let me put mm. it on record and say that for the first 206 units that a Deliite consumes, he's charged rupees 3.90 per unit. It's only beyond the 206 units that a Deliite consumes yeah. that he's charged 5.80 rupees per unit. And mind you, the cost, the average cost of generating and distributing power in Delhi yeah. currently is 5.71 rupees and this is all publicly documented which means that mm. your cost of generation is 5 rupees 71 paise but for the first 206 units you are actually giving power to Delhiites at the cost of 3 rupees 90 paise in other yeah. words the power generation and distribution companies are subsidizing the taxpayers subsidizing perhaps the rich for a good cause uh, you know, uh, subsidizing the poor for a good cause, I stand okay. corrected. But you know, the fact of the matter is that power distribution companies are sitting on losses of 11,000 crore and if electricity yeah, tariffs yeah, yeah, yeah. were to be brought down as AAP claims by 50%, there will be an additional yeah. loss of 5,000 crores. Who's going to pay for that? These are freebies. Well, you know, for now, for now, Arvind like Kedriwal has said that he is going to play Santa Claus. The government is going to provide the subsidy uh, till a CAG audit is conducted and till the electricity uh, discoms are actually audited but I don't want to go down that discussion because we're completely out of time here uh, AK Bhattacharya what Shireen, is your headline going Shireen, to be? Shireen one more uh, point Sanju I, I'm out of time I'm going to give all of you 10 seconds AKB your headline before I get the headline from the other two well uh, uh, AAP uh, wins landslide victory but should eschew populism <laughs> All right. Not the headline, Sanju Varma, opinion, but just for well, it's, a, you. It's, a, it's a wordy, it's a wordy headline. Sanju Varma, ten seconds to you. Yeah. yeah. Shireen, I will just come to specifics. You know, they promised free Wi-Fi. Free Wi-Fi is yeah. not about connecting a computer hardware uh, to a server or a cable device. Free Wi-Fi can only be achieved if spectrum and broadband are available at a certain I, bandwidth. I get and that, and that's the same speed. issue facing and Digital India as well, Sanju. I get that, that is the same you issue. Know, 
That is the same yeah, issue facing no, but, digital but India. Shireen, San, Shireen, Sanju, I'm, you I'm know, completely out of you time. You cannot, you cannot uh, have every. I, I get that. I get that. And, and, and that's exactly what we've been discussing is that the promises made by the AAP manifesto are going to be a tall ask to deliver on. Meena Sandhyal, the final word to you. Uh, how are you going to ensure that you deliver on the promise that you've made to the people of Delhi? They gave you a second chance. You've, you've had a phenomenal comeback, but they're not going to be forgiving the next time around. And so here's the point, Shireen, you know, uh, voters don't make their decision on the basis of the cynical panelists you have on TV debates. <laughs> they know that what we said in the last 49 days we delivered, Jo kaha, so kia, ab jo keh rahe hain, wo bhi karke dikhayenge. Don't worry, madam, we have done our homework and we will deliver. You can rest assured, your markets will go up, you have no reason for concern. All right, Meera Sanya, Sanju Varma, A.K. Bhattacharya, R. Jagannathan. Sanju, we're completely out of time. I'm, I'm afraid I am going to have to close this panel discussion. Thank you very much for joining us. And as they say, only time will tell. And of course, we will keep you updated on all the promises that the Ahmadi Party has made for Delhi and whether they deliver on them or not.